Hi, I'm DG Dino from Jinxer Games, and this tutorial is about how you can make a static minimap. Let's get started. But first, I would like to thank everyone who purchased my Playmaker samples on the Asset Store. I would also like to ask if you could rate my asset and maybe give a review. Again, thank you. Okay, first I will show you how I made the minimap. So I went into 3D, then I selected my complete map, scrolled in a bit, then I turned off the boxes because I don't need that on the minimap, and also the player I disabled also, then I deselect everything and click on here for orthographic. And now I can use a snipping tool or print screen or anything else as long as you can copy what you have here. And this I just edited in Photoshop and then I had this result. Let me turn everything on again. And let me just play this once. And when I move around. You can see on the minimap the rotation is working and also when I go to the walls you can see on the end it stops and the bottom and let's go top and right so that looks all good. Now let's look to our FSMs. Let me make some space here. First I will go to the main camera. And here I just have a smooth follow action to follow my player. So that's on the camera. The camera will follow my player behind. And that's all what this does. Then on the player. I just have some get axis and add force and a rotate just to move the player around. But I will skip explaining this as our tutorial is about the minimap. So let's have a look at that. I'll go to the scene first here, then go in 2D, I'll scroll out a little bit. And what I have here is my minimap. And inside the minimap, I have this player holder. And inside that, I have my player image. This is just an image I made with Photoshop and standard. It was standing like this. And so with normal players, I also always use like a placeholder. So I thought I will do that here also. And actually, I think that's better also. So you have your rotation for your pivot point and stuff easier to set. So that's fine like that. And let's look to the actions. The first action I have here is rec transform get wrecked. And I will get the width and the height from my minimap. So let's have a look at it. Here's my minimap and I can resize this in the width or in the height and when I start to play it will calculate the width and the height. Uh, one important thing is you need to turn off preserve aspect because as you can see here in the top and in the bottom I have empty space and the calculation from this rect will calculate with the empty space included. That's why we have to turn off the preserve aspect. Now I like it more to have a similar size to the field. So let me put this back again. And I think this is about okay. Let me check. Yeah, we can do a little bit more. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, let's get back to the actions. So after I get the width and the height, I will use a float divide and I will use the field width 
and that's actually the width from my game so i just have to try that out and run until one end and till the other end with my character or just position a cube or something and then i know the size of my field and best is to have the center of the field in zero zero because that makes it more easy to use the minimap and I have set my variables to be visible in the inspector. You can do that by going to the variable and then just here on the inspector, turn it on. And then you can see them here and also adjust them. So I know my field width is 100 and my height is 50. And so I use this in here to divide my width. And to divide my height and then I will use a float add to add an offset to my rect width and an offset to my rect height and I will show you in a minute how I will get this and why I'm getting this and when everything is done I will do a broadcast and send an event rect ready and why I'm doing this is because I have my boxes here and they need to get this rect also. So it needs to be calculated first, else I would have to do this also in here again. So I thought it's better to do it once there and then just get the floats from the player holder. And then we will go to the next state. In here I have a get position and I will be getting the position from the player and I will be getting the X and the Z position in space world and every frame. Then I have a float multiply and I will multiply the X by rect width and I will also do this every frame. Then also for the Z I will do this but with the rect height. And then I will use this rect transform set local position. And this will set the position from my player on my minimap. Then on my cube, I have the same, except I have this get FSM float to get this uh, rect width and rect height, as I showed you before. And then I have this get position, but I'm not using every frame because they are static objects so it's no need and the multiply multiply z and then the rect transform set local position and i do everything just once and not every frame i could position them manually but if i would reposition later on and i would forget to reposition it on the minimap then the positions would not match and in this way, I'm sure that they are on the correct position. And now let me show you how to do this offset. First, I will set them to zero. And I will go to my scene, set to 3D, select my field, close in a bit, select my player, move him close to the corner, then double click my player to close up and let's place him near in the corner. Something like that is good. And now when we play the game and let's go here to our minimap and to the player. And here you can see that the player is inside the walls. So we don't want that. And I can move my offset now, but that won't do anything. So to check this out, we have to go into our player holder and we need to copy this. And then we can paste this above. 
and then we need to set everything on every frame and now we can play again go to the scene and if I change the offset in the inspector you can see it's moving so let's say this would be minus one or oh, way too much minus 0.1 okay that's already better minus 0 0.5 so that's good and this will be minus 0.1 and that looks good so another thing i can show you now is when i resize this minimap you can see the player stays nicely there in the corner so that looks good okay now we have to set this here so minus 0 0.05 and minus 0 0.1 And in combination with the other tutorial for the interactive minimap, you could get the position on this map and also do things in your field with calculating that. So for that, you can look to my other tutorial, the interactive minimap. And that's it. Thank you for watching. If you like the tutorial, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You can support my work by becoming a patron at Patreon or donate me with PayPal or purchase my assets on the asset store. You can find the links in the descriptions below.